So after seeing the proof of why these terms can work, now we're going to actually build a Taylor series. So a Taylor series, again, how we, we assume that we can find a series that represents a function, uh, we can, we'd have x minus a, and a is whatever value you kind of want to start and have that point of tangency at. You know, normally we'd say, find the tangent line at, in this case, pi over 2. But now we're going to find a series that, that is really centered on pi over 2, and that pi over 2 is that per point of perfect tangency. And as we move out from there, it, you won't be as exact, okay? So our a is pi over 2. So every term is going to have an x minus pi over 2. And you can see we're going to need to find derivatives and divide by factorials to get the coefficients, just like we saw in that proof before, okay? So here's how I usually start, as I'm just beginning to find these. Um, you'll notice here that we start at 0. Okay. The first term is 0. So that's like saying you're doing uh, f to the 0. Well, that's the function. Okay. That's just the function. That's not a derivative. That's just the function. Well, the function is sine of x. Okay, we just go down. Uh, derivative? Well, the derivative of sine is cosine. Second derivative? Derivative of cosine is negative sine. Third derivative? Derivative of negative sine is negative cosine. And this will be my last one for now. Fourth derivative the derivative of negative cosine is positive sine. Now, you'll see we need these derivatives. You know, it tells us find some derivatives. We're just going to march down the first, second, third derivative. But it actually says evaluate it at a. Okay. So if I evaluate all of these derivatives, you know, I'll just put at x equals pi over 2 because that's the point we're, we're doing at. We'll make a little table. The sine of pi over 2 is 1. The cosine of pi over 2 is 0. Sine of, the negative sine of pi over 2 is negative 1. Negative cosine would be 0 and 1. Okay, so those are my values. So all I've done right now is found this. Okay, so the first term, let's start building here. The first term starting at, at n equals 0 is the 0 derivative, so the function's value, it's 1. Next. And I guess you could also say it's times x minus pi over 2 to the 0 power over 0 factorial. Um, you could say that. I don't know that you necessarily need to put all that. And I'll explain that in a second. All right. Now, the next one, you see that coefficient is 0. So it's x minus pi over 2 to the first power over 1 factorial. Then we've got negative 1, x minus pi over 2 to the second, and 2 factorial. You'll notice these things always agree. Okay, I, I hope you're seeing that, that when I, I have the second power, I've got the second uh, factorial, and I'm using the second derivative to give me that coefficient. Okay, let me keep going here. To the third power, 3 factorial. And the last one I found be to the fourth power, this would be 4 factorial. Okay, let's do some, some simplifying of this. Anything to the 0 power is 1, 0 factorial is 1, so this first term is just 1. Okay. Now, this next piece right here, of course. 0 times anything is 0, so that is completely gone. Now, I should just point out, these first two terms right here, the, just these two, these make the tangent line. Because a tangent line is just the first degree Taylor polynomial. It fits and it only go, it's only linear. It only is x to the first. So that those first two terms make the tangent line. Okay. 
Uh, so next, we've got negative 1 over 2 factorial. That's just negative 1 half. And then x minus pi over 2 squared. The next term would be 0 because 0 over 3 factorial is 0. Then we've got 1 over 4 factorial. So 4 factorial is 24. So here is my the first three terms of this Taylor series of sine around pi over 2. Now one last thing that's kind of nice to do, I'm sorry I didn't get that first term, is to look at your Taylor series, and I just pulled it from the last, uh, last page, and come up with the general term, okay, if it just kept going. And of course the general term, or this series, uh, you know, the first thing I would look at is, does it alternate? So it does, so I'd want a negative 1 to the nth power. Now you'll notice the very first term is, um, is uh, positive, so we might need to make it n plus 1 or n minus 1, but any, that would do it, okay? Then after that, it looks like the numerator is always going to be 1 because... Um, the uh, <coughs> at least the numerator of the coefficient because sine and cosine it just toggles between 1 and negative 1. It looks like the denominator, you know, if you remember from the previous, it was 2 pi and then 4, or, uh, excuse me, 2 factorial. And this one was 4 factorial. Uh, the next one would be 6 factorial. I guess we could also say that that was 0 factorial there. So we're going to have 2n factorial, okay, because it's only the evens. And the reason we won't worry about the odds, well, those are the ones that we encounter cosine of pi over 2, which is 0. So we only have the evens. And then we're going to have x minus pi over 2, because that's in every single term, raised to the same exact power as factorial we had, so 2n. So... Again, this is the part that gets us to alternate. We're going to have this 2, 4, 4, the next would be 6. It's those even terms factorial. That's how we generate even terms. And then x minus pi over 2, you'll see that's going to be in every single term. And uh, it's the same power as factorial. So this is the general term.